a Wikividi Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Shooting of Oscar Grant Oscar Grant III was a 22-year-old African-American man who was fatally shot in the early morning hours of New Year's Day 2009 by Park Police Officer Johannes Mazel in Oakland, California, United States. Responding to reports of a fight on a crowded Bay Area rapid transit train returning from San Francisco, Bart police officers detained Grant and several other passengers on the platform at the Fruitvale Bart station. Officer Johannes Mazel and another officer had forced the unarmed Grant to lie face down. Mazel drew his pistol and shot Grant in the back. He was treated and pronounced dead January 1 at Highland Hospital in Oakland. The events were captured on multiple official and private digital video, and privately owned cell phone cameras. Owners disseminated their footage to media outlets and to various websites, where it was watched millions of times. Both peaceful and violent protests of police actions took place in the following days. On January 30, 2010, Alameda County prosecutors charged Maisel with murder in their indictment for the shooting. The officer resigned his position and pleaded not guilty. The trial began on June 10, 2010. On July 8, 2010, Maisel was found guilty of involuntary manslaughter and not guilty of second-degree murder and voluntary manslaughter, though initial protests on July 8 against the jury verdict were peacefully organized, after dark there were incidents of looting, arson, destruction of property, and small riots. Nearly 80 people were eventually arrested. On July 9, 2010, the U.S. Justice Department opened a civil rights investigation against Maisel. The federal government can prosecute independently for the same act under the separate sovereign's exception to double jeopardy. No charges have been filed to date. On November 5, 2010, Maisel was sentenced to two years, minus time served. He served his time in Los Angeles County Jail protective custody, held in a private cell for his safety. On June 13, 2011, Maisel was released under parole after serving 11 months. Oakland's civil rights attorney John Burris filed a $25 million wrongful death claim against Bart on behalf of Grant's family. Bart settled with Grant's daughter and mother for a total of $2.8 million in 2011. It also settled with several of Grant's friends who had sued for damages because of police brutality. A separate suit by Grant's further did not result in settlement, as the jury determined that his being imprisoned during much of Grant's lifetime meant they did not have much of a relationship. Background Oscar Grant had been celebrating with his friends at the Embarcadero in San Francisco on New Year's Eve. He and about eight friends returned to East Bay in the lead car of a BART train bound for Fruitvale, a station in Oakland. BART offered extended service and a special flash pass for the New Year's Eve holiday. At approximately 2 a.m. PST, BART police responded to reports of a physical altercation involving up to 20 people on an incoming train from the West Oakland BART station. The participants were described as hammered and stoned. Earlier that night, officers Maisel and Woffenden had responded to an incident at the West Oakland station in which persons were allegedly armed, and one had fled the officers. BART officers Tony Pirone and Mary Soldamenegi were the first officers to arrive at the scene. The officers removed Grant and several other men suspected of fighting from the train and detained them on the platform. Pirone handcuffed Grant's friend, angering other riders. Pirone lined up Grant and two other men against the wall. When five other officers, including Johannes Maisel and his partner Woffenden, arrived at the Fruitvale station, they found the situation chaotic, according to their accounts. Maisel's partner on duty, Officer John Woffenden, said the incident was one of the most frightening he had experienced in his 12 years as a police officer. Shooting Bart Officer Mary Soldamenegi was first officer on the scene with her partner, Tony Pirone. They tried to take control of passengers coming off the train. Domenici testified at the Bart incident hearing that Grant and his friends swore at her and did not obey her orders. She is quoted as having testified that, if they would have followed orders, this wouldn't have happened. They probably would have just been cited and released. Perone purportedly confirmed with the train operator that the men the BART police detained on the platform were involved in the fight reported on the train, 
a cell phone video broadcast on local television station KTVU on January 23 showed what appeared to be Perone rushing towards one of the detained men and punching him in the face several times two minutes before the shooting. Grant's family alleges in their civil claim against Bart that an officer threw Grant against a wall and kneed him in the face. The subsequent autopsy showed that Grant's body had no injuries other than that from the bullet wound. Perone's attorney stated that Grant provoked Perone by trying to knee the officer in the groin and by hitting Officer Mary Soldominus's arm when she tried to handcuff one of Grant's friends. Witnesses testified that Perone was the aggressor during the incident. Burris also disputes Perone's account and claims that Grant and his friends were peaceful when the train stopped. Grant raised his hands while seated against the platform wall. Additional footage from a cell phone was presented in court showing Perone standing over the prone Grant before the shooting and yelling, Bitch ass nigger, right? Perone and his attorney say he was repeating an insulting epithet that Grant had yelled at him. While dozens of people from the stop train shouted and cursed at officers, Maisel and Perone positioned Grant face down. According to Perone, Grant was disobeying instructions and cursing at officers. Witnesses said that Grant pleaded with Bart police not to shock him with a taser. Perone knelt on Grant's neck and told him that he was under arrest for resisting an officer. Maisel tried to handcuff Grant, but could not reach his hands. He stood up, unholstered his gun, a Sig Sauer P226, and fired a shot into Grant's back. Immediately after the shooting, Maisel appeared surprised and raised his hands to his face. Several witnesses say Maisel said, Oh my God, several times after the shooting. The .40 caliber bullet from Maisel's semi-automatic handgun entered Grant's back, exited through his front side and ricocheted off the concrete platform, puncturing Grant's lung. According to one witness, Grant yelled, You shot me. I got a four-year-old daughter. Grant died seven hours later, at 9.13 a.m at Highland Hospital in Oakland. Initially there were rumors that Grant was handcuffed before he was shot, but court filings by the district attorney's office say that Grant's hands were behind his back and that he was restrained and unarmed, but do not say he was handcuffed. Maisel said he feared that Grant was going for his waistband and a gun. The day after the shooting, Bart spokesman Jim Allison said that Grant was not restrained when he was shot, and multiple witnesses testified that Grant refused to give up his hands for handcuffing prior to the shooting. The family's claim against Bart stated that Grant was handcuffed only after he was shot. Video Evidence Direct evidence of the shooting was documented by video cameras held by passengers on the train idling next to the platform. As police detained Grant and a number of other men suspected of being involved in the disturbance, several witnesses testified during the preliminary hearing for Mazel's trial that they began recording because they believed Bart officers were acting too aggressively. They gave the videos to television news, which broadcast them. Other posted videos on the internet. Oakland attorney John Burris, who represented the family in their suit against Bart over Grant's death, said Bart confiscated numerous cell phone images that he believed contains additional evidence of the killing. Alameda County District Attorney Tom Orloff said video confiscated by Bart was useful in bringing the murder charge against Maisel. Witnesses at the scene said police attempted to confiscate cameras. These claims were never acknowledged by Bart police. Orloff, the district attorney, said that several passenger videos that had not been made public were very helpful in the investigation. On January 2, KTVU aired a video by an anonymous passenger who submitted a cell phone video of the shooting. On January 23, KTVU aired a cell phone video which appeared to show a second officer punching Grant in the face prior to the shooting. In late February, Cron 4 aired a clip of a video showing a different angle of this altercation. Bart spokesperson Linton Johnson described the surveillance footage from the Fruitvale platform cameras as benign. He said the platform cameras had recorded some of the incident, but footage did not include the shooting. Frank Borelli, a retired police officer and writer, said that the scene as shown in the video moments before the shooting would be as important to understanding what happened as the shooting itself. The four officers have to be operating under a high level of stress given the relatively confined setting and the people on the BART train who are expressing, in a very loud vocal fashion, their displeasure with the officers' actions. Those officers, should things go bad for them, 
are vastly outnumbered by a group of people who have already voiced their unhappiness with the police. After viewing the shooting from multiple angles, police use of force expert Roy Bedard, who initially said he thought the shooting was an accident, changed his mind. He said, I hate to say this, it looks like an execution to me, and, it really looks bad for the officer. University of San Francisco law professor Robert Talbot said the videos could support a claim of an accidental shooting. Nothing about his, Maisel, body looks murderous. Attorney Harland Braun, who won acquittal for an officer in the Rodney King beating, noted that video evidence can be deceptive. Footage does not show what happened before or after an incident. Influence of videos Video images of the incident were widely broadcast and streamed online. Several hundred thousand persons viewed the videos in the first few days after the shooting. One local television station video posted to its website was downloaded more than 500,000 times in four days, and one independent media video posted to the internet averaged more than 1,000 views per hour. Seeing direct evidence of the shooting resulted in public outrage and protests, and fueled riots. Oscar Grant III Oscar Julius Grant III lived in Haywood, California. He worked as a butcher at Farmer Joe's Marketplace in Oakland's Demon District after jobs at several Kentucky Fried Chicken outlets. He had attended both San Lorenzo and Mount Eden High Schools in Haywood until the 10th grade, and eventually earned his GED. Grant was on parole at the time of his death, having been released from prison following a 16-month sentence for gun possession. Grant's funeral was held at the Parmachea Baptist Church in Haywood on January 7, 2009. Grant's mother, sister, daughter, and girlfriend filed a wrongful death claim against Bart following his death. It was settled in 2011. Johannes Maisel Johannes Sebastian Maisel was raised in the Bay Area from the age of four as the oldest of three children. Maisel graduated in the class of 2000 from New Technology High School in Napa, California. He attended college in Napa, in Monterey, and at Sonoma State University where he majored in business, and he developed an interest in police work through a friend who was a police officer. He went on to graduate from Napa Valley College Police Academy in 2006, where he placed in the top five of his class academically, and placed 12 physically. Maisel's girlfriend gave birth to their first child on the day after the shooting, January 2, 2009. Maisel joined the Bay Area Rapid Transit Police in March 2007 during the less than two years prior to the shooting. He had never been the subject of a sustained complaint from Bart's internal affairs department. Since the shooting, a Bay Area man has complained to the media that Maisel had beaten him on November 15, 2008. Maisel's police report said that four officers grabbed the man after he yelled threats and assumed a fighting stance. The accuser was taken to the hospital for chest and facial injuries. He was later booked into jail for resisting arrest. He has not filed a formal complaint against Bart. Bart Review and Investigation Process After the 2009 shooting, Maisel submitted to drug and alcohol testing for Bart's standard operating procedure. The results showed no drugs or alcohol in his system. He retained a criminal defense attorney and refused to speak to the authorities invoking the Public Safety Officers Procedural Bill of Rights Act and the Fifth Amendment, claiming potential self-incrimination. Bart organized an internal investigation of the incident. On January 5, 2009, Maisel's attorney postponed a scheduled meeting by Bart investigators, seeking to defer it. Bart Police Administration and investigators commanded the officer to attend an investigative interview on January 7. Maisel did not attend. Instead his attorney, and his Bart Police Officers Association Union representative came and submitted his letter of resignation. Maisel, and his family received a number of death threats after videos of the shooting appeared, and he moved at least twice. His parents temporarily left their Napa home, because of death threats to the family. Domenici testified at the investigation hearing. She was terminated by Bart based on an accusation that she was untruthful in her statements to transit investigators. She appealed the firing. On December 18, 2010, it was reported that San Francisco labor arbitrator William Riker ordered the former officer reinstated with full back pay, because there was no basis to find that Domenici was not telling the truth. Aftermath 
The shooting and the subsequent riots were covered in regional, national, and international news. Video images of the shooting were widely broadcast and streamed online in the days following Grant's death. Several hundred thousand viewed the videos in the first few days after the incident. Widespread dissemination of the direct evidence of the shooting led to public outrage and protests and fueled riots. Police in riot gear were dispatched and made efforts to disperse the crowds. During the course of the evening of January 8, while there was peaceful protest, some of the protesters turned to rioting and rampant property vandalism. Black Bloc and other rioters smashed hundreds of car and shop windows several private cars, and numerous trash containers and dumpsters. Public buildings such as the Oakland Police Internal Affairs Office and the almost restored Fox Theater were heavily vandalized. The rioting wound down later in the evening. Police made at least 105 arrests for suspicion of various offenses. More than 300 businesses were affected by the vandalism. Community members and activists decried the shooting incident as another case of police brutality. There was a broad public perception that Bath Police and the Alameda County District Attorney's Office were not conducting an effective investigation because, according to an East Bay Times article, Bart completed the shooting investigation on January 12, 2009, 12 days after the shooting occurred. Others were angry that Maisel allegedly did not cooperate with police and district attorney's office investigators. Fruitvale Protest and March Downtown Rioting on January 7, 2009, protests over the shooting and administration of justice began peacefully about 3.30 p.m. with about 500 people gathering at the Fruitvale station. In the early evening, some of the protesters marched toward Oakland's central business district and downtown. Over 200 Oakland police officers were dispatched in an attempt to disperse the protesters. Police roadblocked streets and diverted vehicle and foot traffic. After entering the central business district, the march continued to Bath Police Command and Control Headquarters at 8th and Madison Streets near the Lake Merritt Bath Station. Once at Bath Police Command and Control, a contingent of angry protesters surrounded a police car. The officer driving the car fled on foot. Meanwhile, the rioters broke out the cruiser's windows and attempted to overturn it. A line of police wearing gas masks swept up behind the rear of the march and deployed tear gas in an attempt to disperse the crowd. The protest continued as the crowd marched along 8th Street through Chinatown. At Broadway, officers wearing gas masks deployed more tear gas canisters and acted quickly to charge and disperse the crowd as they approached the vicinity of Oakland Police Headquarters at 7th and Broadway. The protest regrouped downtown at the intersection of 14th and Broadway blocking motor vehicle traffic. Some of the protesters lay face down in the intersection, in a symbolic act of solidarity with Grant, who was killed in the same position. Others shouted at police and chanted in unison. Others carried signs that read, Your idea of justice? And, Jail killer cops, and lit candles in remembrance of Grant. Police in helmets and gas masks grouped in standing line formations on the south, west, and north sides of the intersection, allowing an avenue of retreat down 14th Street on the east side of the intersection. About an hour later, police gave orders to disperse and fired tear gas, rubber bullets, and other non-lethal weapons and devices at demonstrators. Protesters threw bottles, rocks, and other objects at police. Police pushed the crowd east along 14th Street into the Lakeside Apartments District, and the scene dissolved into a riot along the 14th Street spine. Numerous helicopters which had been airborne throughout the evening converged on the area. Law enforcement helicopters shined powerful spotlights down onto surface streets, while media helicopters shot video, which were broadcast in real time on local television stations. In the ensuing hours, a small clutch of rioters burned the contents of trash cans dumpsters, newspaper boxes and set fire to at least five cars, including an Oakland police patrol car. Some rioters smashed the windshields of parked cars. The riot spread deep into the Lakeside Apartments district and cars were burned and heavily damaged on Madison Street. Other rioters in this clutch broke storefront windows, including those of a McDonald's fast food restaurant at Jackson and 14th Streets in the Lakeside Apartments district. The night of the riot coincided with trash collection day the following morning, and numerous trash dumpsters and containers were parked curbside. 
Rioters used these dumpsters to start fires along city streets. Rioters damaged some of the carefully restored historic woodwork and terracotta on the nearly restored Fox Theater. Damage to the Fox was preliminarily estimated at $10,000 to $20,000. Brought to you by Wikivideo Documentaries. Would you like to know more?